y Napsan. So here she goes. So we got to hear the Vulcan howl. I hope we'll get to hear it again. And you get to see as she turns around onto finals and back down the runway again, that wonderful triangular shape, as designed in 1946 by the wonderful Roy Chadwick, who'd also designed the Lancaster and the Anson, great Avro aeroplanes. So as Cav brings the Vulcan in along the runway, along the display line, I'm looking to see him accelerate her to about 300 knots, 345 miles now. So when he takes the power off, it all goes quiet again. <laughs> She's in the colours, this aeroplane. Uh, of, she has the Lincoln coat of arms on the fin, plus the Panthers head of number one group, that was the Royal Air Force group that controlled all of the Balkans, and she represents all of the Balkan squadrons in the 70s, that is number 9, 12, 27, 35, 44, 50, 83, 101, 617, uh, and the operational conversion unit. She also has painted on her nose the spirit of Great Britain, which really encapsulates all that she stands for. Now I think next we're going to see Cam Rubens bring her round towards us. Uh, on the B axis, which I'm sure we've talked about many times today, heading straight in towards us. And then, as she tiptoes up on us again, we'll hear the power come on as he takes her into a spiral climb. Falcon first flew in 1952, only 11 years after the first flight of the Lancaster. Look at the two of them together, and you think they come from different centuries. Not a bit. Designed by the same team.
there you get an idea of the amazing agility of this airplane. She doesn't have a big control yoke like most bombers. She has fighter type control columns for each of the pilots. And of course, she is amazingly agile. In the early days at the Farnborough Air Show, their test pilots actually rolled the airplane. And that became rather frowned upon. And she wasn't allowed to do it anymore. It's perfectly within her capabilities. As she comes in this time, and you see the bomb door open. There we go. And you get an idea of the enormous size of that bomb bay. again, uh, expect to see the bomb bay closing. Nowadays it just contains the names of lots and lots and lots of people who contributed so wonderfully to The biggest problem throughout her life has been money. They seem obvious, but she's not funded by the government, she doesn't belong to the Royal Air Force. And to get this far has cost more than 22 million pounds. companies, BAE Systems, Marshall Aerospace and Defence Group, and Rolls-Royce. Many other companies have given fantastic help. Airbus, AD Holdings, Beagle Technology, Cranfield Aerospace, Goodrich, Kearsley Airways, Megit, Messier Doughty, and Serco. But it is the three technical authority companies that will finally bring Vulcan's illustrious flying life to a close. <laughs> flying season, uh, the Civil Aviation Authority regulations mean that uh, Vulcan will be prohibited from flying. So the end of her career is not about funding, it's not about the supply of spare parts, but it is about mandatory third party support. She is still being enjoyed by three million people every year, probably a whole lot more this year, including uh, children and young people who are inspired to learn more about engineering and aviation. Well, a very good afternoon, 
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you just heard I'm squadron leader Mike Ling, and I'm lieutenant, the supervisor with the Royal Air Force Aerobatic Team, the Red Arrows, and I'll be talking you through this display, which is about to begin.